and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jack D. in the news this week. In North London, a rail track spokesman proudly unveils the revamped Halsden station. <laughs> <laughs> There are signs that the first of the government's new super casinos may be located in Bournemouth. <laughs> there's a big chance. And there's embarrassment for one rodent as he becomes the first rat ever to join a sinking ship. Arnie and his ops team is a loyal party worker who brought out a celebratory book on Labour's 1997 election victory called Things Can Only Get Better. And it's as true today as it was ten years ago. <laughs> Please welcome John O'Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight, an actress and TV presenter who has said she finds it annoying being introduced as Jimmy Tarbuck's daughter. So please welcome Brian Tarbuck's cousin, Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> and we start with round one. Paul and Lisa, uh, any ideas what this could possibly be about? Ah, uh, yes, this is David Beckham. He's just learned to be a pilot and he's also become a coach driver. <laughs> um, so he's very busy. Peter Crouch is wondering how he becomes a coach driver. Um, there's the World Cup coming up, but I can't see any publicity about it, so I've no idea when it's happening. <laughs> uh, there's Wayne Rooney, he's been photographed getting out of a plane, looking very happy. Remember, the fine, yeah. he gave a cheer, the lads are, yeah, absolutely. Look, is he in his dog's house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be great if he just smashed straight into a truck? Oh, no, so. <laughs> All sat back too far, and that flag shot right up his ass. Indeed. <laughs> you can do it. It's the World Cup, which starts sometime in the next month or so. Today, in fact. Today. Yes. So the first game's already been played. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I thought it did very well. Who would have thought? Quite. <laughs> Amazing result. Extraordinary. Ooh. For those of you who don't know, want to know the result, look away now. <laughs> David Cameron was there, was flying was the England flag, and... Uh, and who, another minister's doing that. Who's that? The woman for sport. Tessa Jowell Thank is... Thank you uh, so much. I've uh, uh, got two white flags on her... Uh, her uh, white van it is now, actually. She's changed her uh, <laughs> really ministerial it? car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, among others was Tessa Jowell, uh, who's quoted as saying, it's a good way to come together and have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Count me in. <laughs> Uh, why hasn't Tony Blair been flying the flag on his car, though? He's not allowed to, is he? It's a security risk, apparently. Because it would interfere with the radio signals, I think, I remember. they claim. I mean, you know. Mm. A flag? Uh, a little plastic flag. It could be, you know, made in China. Could be a little bug in there. <laughs> 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 Are you saying every English flag sold has got a little bug placed there by the Chinese? It's true! <laughs> I really think it would monitor all these conversations. <laughs> It wouldn't work, because they just get together and say, have you heard anything interesting? No, there's a lot of flapping, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> what have the Dutch been making out there? Oh. <laughs> Does that remind you of a day joke? Yeah. <laughs> just the <word> Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> so they've been making Nazi helmets coloured orange and T-shirts with a slogan, which is quite inflammatory to Germans. Anyone know what it says on these T-shirts? You lost two world wars. <laughs> It says, I want my bicycle back. <laughs> oh, that's, all. that's going too far. It is, yeah. <laughs> yes. that's, that's Apparently, upsetting. thousands of bikes were confiscated from the Dutch uh, civilians by the Germans. Oh, God. <laughs> that wasn't the worst thing they did, During though, was the it? war, I might add. Yeah. It wasn't just a... <laughs> that book didn't sell as well as Anne Frank, though, did it? I mean, <laughs> yeah. What about the girl who had her bike nicked? <laughs> So, what was the real cup sob story? Uh... Was it that little boy who was, uh, he won a ticket to be the mascot? And he's told all his mates, he's only six. No. Look at him. Louis oh. Moffat, age Aww. six. And what happened? He thought he was going to lead out the England team, and he's mm. leading out the German team. Yeah. <laughs> Don't the Germans have any small boys? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a big shortage I've missed? <laughs> They're all busy riding around on their new bicycles. <laughs> Louis Moffat, age six, won a competition to be the World Cup mascot and thought uh, it was for England, but it turned out uh, he was to lead Germany out at the opening game of the World Cup. So, uh, bad luck, Louis. Don't worry, I've had a word with him and now you're not going at all. Happy now? <laughs>
Lisa, I was wondering if uh, if you knew what one enterprising travel firm are offering during the World Cup. Oh, blimey! Perhaps for those who who don't want to watch. Is it some sort of spa getaway weekend? Quite right. Well done, Lisa. It's a stay at a special retreat where it's guaranteed that no one will even mention the World Cup. It's called Scotland. <laughs> It is, of course, 40 years since we won the World Cup, but in one month's time, it'll be 40 years and one month. <laughs> Some lucky people have managed to get hold of these limited-edition football-themed tea bags, leaving the rest of us with these boring, nothing-to-do-with-football, football-shaped <laughs> tea bags. The German authorities have warned England fans that goose-stepping and Nazi salutes are not welcome in Germany. <laughs> Come on, make your minds up. <laughs> Ian and John. Oh, someone's gone camping in the front garden. Someone smashed, um... Oh, yes, this is... Oh, we know, this is Forest Gate Gate. Police went up to uh, North London to arrest somebody and find, you know, weapons of mass destruction and didn't find them in this uh, little house in uh, Forest Gate and uh, managed to shoot someone, said the brother did it, changed their minds... And Blair said, I'm 101% behind them. <laughs> Safest place to be is to be behind them. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. No, it, it is um, the Iraq war in microcosm, isn't it? So the weapons of mass destruction are there, they're in the wardrobe, we're gonna find them. <laughs> oh dear, they're not there. Well, the intelligence was good. Well, it wasn't that good, was it? No, all right, it was rubbish. <laughs> they, said, they said it was a very good source. The intelligence was a very good source. Mm. It was just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, actually, it's just all part of Operation Shoot Anyone Who's Vaguely Dusky. Yes, it was. <laughs> What are the sun blaming the shooting on? Is this the gloves? Oh. It is the gloves, yes, Ian. Because it was so dangerous that they had to wear thick rubber gloves. Yeah. And uh, there's now a call to ban thick gloves. Probably better just to ban thick policemen. <laughs> <laughs> the Telegraph filled its readers in on the background to the raid with searching questions such as who produced the intelligence? To which the answer was, it is understood to have come from a human source. <laughs> I'm surprised they're even allowed to print that kind of information. <laughs> what role has Kentucky Fried Chicken played in the news this week? Uh, they sent Kentucky Fried Chicken up to a guy who'd been up on a roof for 20 hours, accused possibly, or allegedly, of uh, stealing a car. And mm. he then shinned up a drain pipe, sat on the roof, and the police had the sheer audacity to feed him. Do you know what happened? They sent him a, a can of Pepsi. Did they? Yes, they did. Do you know what happened then? He drank it. <laughs> <laughs> Through the empty can back at the police. <laughs> he pulled open the ring pool and found out he was going to lead England out as a mascot in the opening. <laughs> <game. laughs> well, you're almost right, Paul. He, uh, he sent it back complaining that it had been opened. Picky bastard, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, one outraged local complained he's been treated like a king. <laughs> According to onlookers, the suspect threw tiles from the roof, tucked into a KFC, shouted abuse at passers-by, then settled down for a nap. <laughs> it was several hours before police realised he wasn't just a builder. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, the arrival of the warm weather has marked the beginning of the silly season in the tabloids, which traditionally lasts from the 1st of June to the 31st of May. <laughs> So here's a selection of some of the smaller stories of the week that have been filling the papers in what I've called the sizzling summer seaside tabloid picture spin quiz round. <laughs> so here we go with the first spin. <laughs> Ian and John. It's Fergie. Uh, Sarah Ferguson has confessed that all she does is stay in with the kids watching DVDs all the time. And that's a bit sad, isn't it, for somebody who was the Duchess of York? <laughs> Her and the two girls are like a tripod. They are, are they? That's what she said. They all lean together like that. Yeah. And balance a camera on the top of their three heads. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, described a typical uh, Saturday in the Fergie household. Mm. Do you know what that would, was? Well, it was all to do with sitting there on the sofa and eating junk food, watching old films, which, when you're the spokesman for Weight Watchers, suggests you haven't read the manual. <laughs> Good point. Yes, I hadn't thought of that one. 
<laughs> I worked with her this year. Did you? Yes. In what? In, uh, corporate. Um, and it? I have to say, she's absolutely charming. Oh, f off. No, she's... <laughs> <laughs> She's a really easy target. I feel terrible now. <laughs> um, so, who, uh, who's been taking the opposite view to Fergie about children's viewing habits? Uh, a hint, he was a headmaster of some... a school, obviously, I was going to say something. <laughs> when he said they shouldn't sit around all weekend watching DVDs... Uh, you don't know that, you've guessed, because you're an intelligent man and you put it all together and you came up with the right answer. <laughs> it doesn't really give you a point. This is uh, Duncan Harper. He's the head of a primary school in, in Bromley. Uh, he's been calling round to the houses of underperforming children and taking their TVs and PlayStations away. He's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, recent revelation about Sarah Ferguson's home life. The Duchess of York shocked the royal family when she revealed Saturday and Sunday we sleep till midday, have lunch and watch DVDs till bedtime. Then during the week, they like to relax. <laughs> you see the guilt you've spread in the room? Oh, God. So, uh, teams, stand by. <clears throat> Fingers on buzzers. Shakespeare. Why has Shakespeare been in the news? Is, uh, is it the old theory that he was a woman? It does stand Because he looks there, yeah. pretty much like one Well, that's there. the first photograph that's verified that claim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a story in the paper that uh, some schools are dumbing down Shakespeare and making it easier for the kids to understand. And so mm. the sonnets are much shorter now. There's, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Now, blood, because you is a minger in it. <laughs> Is the uh, the answer that uh, these uh, plays uh, have been dumbed down for GCSE students? This is from Romeo and Juliet. Turn thee, Benvolio, look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword or manage it to part these men with me. Becomes come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. <laughs> Leave it out, big nose. <laughs> Uh, do you know what else has been revealed this week about people's knowledge of Shakespeare? And, He's uh, dead. Mm. <laughs> there are some uh, quotes from GCSC students. Shakespeare wrote tragedies, comedies and hysterectomies. <laughs> <laughs> There's one student who tried to reassure his teachers by writing on his exam paper, I'm not thick, I just don't get this, yeah? <laughs> I had no idea they kept my English O-level. <laughs> So, fingers on buzzers for our next summer story. Ian and John. All I remember is men fighting over a woman in a chess match or sex battles Danny over a chess match. You got the name, yes. Mm. Didn't he have a relationship via the internet with the Australian chess champion? And his rival at chess got in quick with her and mm. uh, Danny Gormley went crackers. Uh, yeah, the girl in question was Ariane Kawili. She's actually better known as the Anna Kornikova of chess. Ah. And uh, here's another top female chess player. She's Russian, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop and the actress. Mm. Here's a Serbian player. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're just making this up now. <laughs> uh, I brought them in and they agreed to show them. <laughs> She seems to be emerging from a giant sugar puff. There's no reason for that. <laughs> and uh, here's an American. Standing... Get that scene too. That's actually. <laughs> mm. Standing with uh, Ian in front of her with a chess piece on his head. <laughs> I know Ian Hislop, and I think he's an easy target. <laughs> yeah. He's a really nice bloke when you meet him. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, this is the story of the two chess players who disrupted a tournament after getting into a punch-up over a girl. The fight started when Danny Gormley saw his rival dancing with a girl he fancied. He tried to step... He tried to... Shall we from the top of that one? Let me just... Let's do the dumbed-down version. <laughs> yeah, I'm a very easy target, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of corporates with myself, and actually... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I mentioned nice it. All right, shut up and laugh when you're meant to laugh, all right? <laughs> <laughs> the fight started when Danny Gormley saw his rival dancing with a girl he fancied. He tried to stop them, but was unable to, as he could only move diagonally. 
<laughs> so, fingers on buzzers for the next one. Paul. Uh, Hyacinth Bucket, Bouquet, uh, posh names, names, so certain names are posh than other names. Some American scientist or Australian or perhaps Armenian scientist has looked at a list of names and has picked out the more sort of uh, common names as the list of surnames. It affects how you do in life, doesn't it? That's part of the research. That if you've got a, a posher name, you do better. Academics have worked out a scale of how posh we are according to our surnames. Mm. Um, Lisa, if you, you, know, you might want to sit back on this round. Uh, it's not meant to <laughs> not embarrass anyone, it's just for fun. It's an unusual name, though, isn't it? Lisa? Tarbuck. Yeah? <laughs> Only one letter away from being a coffee chain. Who do you think is actually the poshest here in the, in the panel? Who do we think is the poshest? It's got to be you. According D. to the scale, uh, yeah. one being the poshest and the hundred being the lowest, uh, it is me. Yes, I'm at the top. <laughs> and uh, I score 25 out of 100. Paul Merton uh, scores 29. In fact, we're both posher than the Queen at 38. Uh, what, Sachs Coburg not good enough? <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not, not, not a posh name. Not as posh as D. <laughs> uh, O'Farrell has 43, so it's not bad. I have to say his lop uh, came in with a fairly oikish 52. It's... <laughs> Surprising and uh, Tarbuck. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter, we'll just move on, shall we? <laughs> it's just for fun, we don't want anyone embarrassed. It's so. Is it really, really low down. It's, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. <laughs> you know what the poshest names you can have are? I've got a feeling I saw the word Cadbury in there somewhere on the Guinness. headline. Uh, no, no, see, they're all trade. Oh, well. <laughs> if you're like me, you'd know that. You'd know the difference. Is it Chumley Marshbanks? Uh, <laughs> well, that's been a full night's holiday there. <laughs> Joint poshest names are Pallet, Seligman, Margolis, Oppenheim and Wolfson. And careful what you say, because a lot of my best friends are on that list. <laughs> they did the same with first names. Lisa comes out with a, a score of 89. Which is, which is quite low. So <laughs> I get the champagne, and with your combined scores, Lisa, you get to stay behind and mop the floor afterwards. I'll do a bloody good job of it as well, I'll tell you. Um, and how did the Sun report the story, did you see? Wayne Riddock, chaviest name. How did Wayne feel about that? <laughs> He's your boyfriend, how did he feel? <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. The four are cranberries, croquet sets, veal brequin, bathing shorts, and the novel labyrinth, labyrinth by Jane. <laughs> Do the dumbed down version, maze. <laughs> yeah. All right. The croquet set's probably the clue, because after the pictures of uh, John Prescott, they said sales of croquet sets are going through the roof. Cranberries suddenly became very popular, and Delia Smith included them in some recipes in a new book, and Sainsbury suddenly stocked up with lots of cranberries. That was a new thing. These shorts, I don't know who's wearing those shorts, but whoever's wearing them, presumably they wore them, and they took off as a... Or maybe they didn't. Maybe they're the one things that didn't take off. Is it generally that sort of area, fads that took off after somebody publicised them? The shorts were worn yeah. by Prince William. No, um, they weren't. Well, they may have been. String fella. Uh, he's no, they're far too long. He wears a thong. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Only at twilight. I'd put you off your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thong at twilight. <laughs> 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 so, no, don't laugh now. You wouldn't respect it. Um, <laughs> the shorts the other one out. We don't know why. Because they but... didn't sell. Uh, you are right. The answer is that they've all enjoyed a sudden rise in sales thanks to their endorsements by celebrities. Apart Tony from... Blair. Well done, yes, sir. Uh, the uh, Ville Brecan swimming I shorts. I just how embarrassing it sales was. Sales of which plummeted after Tony Blair was pictured wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> it actually cost him £80, these shorts cost. Mm. I expect they're about a fiver now. <laughs> Cranberries have been linked with uh, medicinal benefits, mm. specifically treating which condition? Urinary conditions, aren't they? It's very good for um, inf infections of the bladder. They are. A uh, memory. Memory. Yeah. When you eat them every day, you suddenly think, oh, now I remember why I'm pissing myself every morning. <laughs> <laughs> a 
According to uh, the Ville Brequin website, <laughs> they have uh, special holes for rapid air evacuation. <laughs> Tony generously saved taxpayers' money on this week. He flew back? No, he did, yeah. Um, easy jet. Close. Was it sleazy jet? No. <laughs> the, the other. Was <laughs> it Ryanair? It was the other, yeah, the Ryanair. Oh, right, don't do any ads. No, Just no. in case you've done a corporate and they're lovely. <laughs> um, <laughs> An easy target, I find. Easy target. <laughs> On the same day as his photo appeared in the papers, the Mail on Sunday revealed that a signed photograph of the Prime Minister was sold on eBay for 11p. <laughs> the buyer was a Mr G Brown, who also bought a dartboard. <laughs> so, time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication the Laugh-A-Minute Journal of Headache and Pain. <laughs> Was there a journal of headache and a separate magazine called Pain? And he said, look, we're fighting the same market here. Why don't we just join together? Well, since I've been subscribing, they've been together, but I, <laughs> I believe that, that is the right... Yes, okay. good point. So here we go. Lovers of Roll Mops warned what? <laughs> Roll Mops' wife has found out. <laughs> <laughs> You're very close there. You're yeah, very close, you Lisa. See, I think you deserve fast. that point. <laughs> trying to be nice now. Yes. I know it's too late, but I'm trying. <laughs> yes, Lisa very correctly got the... <laughs> uh, the answer is herrings are running out. Can we change that now? <laughs> what was the actual well, answer? Well, shortages on the cards, but I think Lisa had it, frankly. <laughs> Next, uh, Welsh say we're not what? Talking in a real language, it's just to annoy you. We're <laughs> <laughs> not having he any headaches this year. Uh, well, I'll give you the answer now. Uh, Welsh say we're not simpletons who love mining and singing. <laughs> yes, Welsh people have said that a new pot noodle advert unfairly stereotypes them. Talking of pot noodles, a little bonus thing. Uh, does anyone know what they're calling the new vegetarian version in Korea? Oh, is it pot poodles? <laughs> oh, it's good. nearly there. Not poodles. Not, not poodles. I'm completely with smoked cannabis, pot pot noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Cambodian dictator, pot pot noodles. Mm. <laughs> is there a musical version coming out? <laughs> <laughs> Top of the pot pot noodles. <laughs> I so wish I could come up with one. <laughs> Cranberry lovers, piss pot noodles. <laughs> There's one for babies, cot noodles. <laughs> oh, f <laughs> off. <laughs> They've got one in Lancashire, have you heard about that? <laughs> pot, pot noodles, yeah. <laughs> There's one new eat down caves. Pot <laughs> hole noodles. noodles. Thank you. At least let me get it out. I was trying to spread the blame around. <laughs> this has been the best bit of the show. <laughs> Forget all this. Who did this? He did that. Make up names of pot noodles for half Everybody's out. I happy. know. There's one the police eating their car. Yeah. Shop noodles. <laughs> Have you got a cold snot noodles? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what they are if you haven't got a cold. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> I'm doing a new version based on I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> For me, it's pot noodles. <laughs> You've got to be desperately lonely to make one of them, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> Still, let's forget that. If you, uh, yeah. Has anybody seen that? Yeah, I've had those when I've it's been sad. <laughs> true. And I just had a vision of the Deputy Prime Minister alone in his room with Prescott noodles. <laughs> <laughs> and you find yourself following the instructions carefully. <laughs> oh, you've got to put the lid back on and leave it for two minutes. And then... Oh, I do. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not as patient as that. I just stick it in my mouth and get a load of hot water and just go... <laughs> <laughs> Save some cutlery. Yeah. <laughs> New EastEnders one, dot noodles. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, all the time. <laughs> 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 all this time and he got 
starts to D. D. <laughs> it's how they work out bot, bot, short for bottom. There's bottom nothing noodles. come, there has to be. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is the one that's anonymous. What? What noodles? <laughs> Oh, we'll stop now. Stop, right. Mm. Stop Can it. we? Professional intensity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> There's the one you have on the boat, yacht noodles. <laughs> You've gone to the other end of the um, alphabet. I mean... <laughs> oh, he thought, I'll start from the back, they won't know this. Yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes going zot noodles. The sad thing <laughs> is, I went all the way through. I didn't... <laughs> so, final scores. Ian and John mm. have eight. Uh, Paul and Lisa have 12. <laughs> but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. <laughs> Man who drops out of plane without parachute remains nonchalant up to the last two <laughs> feet. <laughs> On which note we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and John O'Farrell, Paul Merton and Lisa Tarbuck. Can I leave you with the news that there's more bad news for Home Secretary John Reid as a prison warder returns from his tea break. <laughs> To the triumph of a uh, last getting one of their pandas pregnant, uh, keepers at Beijing Zoo are now forced to cater for all her cravings. <laughs> <laughs> and at England's World Cup Hotel, Peter Crouch leaves his shoes outside the bedroom door for a maid. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to a special edition of They Think It's All Over with a volleyer, a striker, a fowler, <laughs> and a pie shoveling bearded fat bloke. <laughs> Coming up next on BBC One. Well, that was the last in the current series of Have I Got News For You. There'll be a new one in the autumn. We're just uh, debating what retakes to do. They want to do the pot noodle stuff again, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been going? I think it started in the mid-70s. Since the year dot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new one.